My name is Jan van Heukelom. I work at ECDPM as the political economy advisor. Um, we organized a uh, workshop uh, with uh, senior managers from donor agencies on thinking and working politically. Uh, this is crucial for uh, donors and for development and developing partners because development processes are riddled with politics and understanding the uh, politics in an environment is, is crucial when external actors want, want to engage uh, with these processes. Uh, I take the view that uh, development by definition is political and that development cooperation in the way in which it has been practiced in the period since the Second World War to date, has also always been political. So that the question is not so much whether we bring politics in, but what kind of politics we bring in. And uh, to the extent to which the emphasis on a more political approach uh, to development uh, would represent a new momentum and a new opportunity. The, the benefit is based on the, some um, evaluation or assessment of why the traditional development approach doesn't work. Uh, if you have a purely technical approach to development with very nice logical framework, results, indicators, uh, you wonder why sometimes your project do not meet the result expected. And that's why, because the political dimension of reform in sector, different sectors of development, is not sufficiently taken into account. Well, I think the reason why we started this, this network called Thinking and Working Politically is partly coming out of failure. It's recognition that a lot of the things we were doing before weren't working. We had these great projects on paper, which weren't happening in, 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 on the ground. We found that we'd ignored massively important groups of people, women, people at the bottom of the social um, structures, you know, excluded groups. And so it's partly recognition of that failure, saying, OK, we need to think about this differently. And out of that has come this discussion about power and politics. I think the, the, the issue here is that for a very long time, development um, practitioners and, and donors in particular have thought of development processes as being apolitical and technical. And in reality, all of these processes that involve changing um, patterns of behavior, changing power structures and what have you, are deeply political at heart. And unless we understand the underlying politics and institutional dynamics at play, we will fail to understand properly how to address developmental challenges. The headline is, despite the major benefits of the project framework, the fact that it makes one think logically about the impacts of your intervention, I think the implications are, first of all, we need to be much less prescriptive in identifying our activities and our outputs. Mm. Second, much more flexible in the way we release resources and the way we manage the uh, initiative. And the third implication is that if you maintain a focus on the goal and you know what your problem is and you work iteratively as I've just suggested, then the process of design monitoring and implementation become the same thing mm. because you're learning from implementation you're constantly redesigning the initiative as you go forward just like for every type of change which has to do with big organizations and smaller ones uh, the role of active minorities is extremely important in order to disseminate the proper knowledge. ECDPM is a think, and they like to say, and do tank. So the dissemination of knowledge to the policy makers within the development cooperation system and within the countries will be a key factor. Dissemination of instruments of political analysis so that we review the way 
we design public policies and we implement them. This has to come from different places. There has to be leadership from the top. I mean, I think there's some really good people here, very senior people saying, we need to do this. You need to be able to demonstrate that it can be done. So examples, case studies, but also exchanges, getting people out to see it on the ground. Because you know, you're probably, from what I'm saying, it all sounds terribly abstract and vague. And you've got to get this to a situation where people actually, when they're confronted with a situation, for example, there's a scandal or a crisis, and they're thinking, OK, so what new opportunities have come because this person has resigned, or because this political failure has happened, or because this financial crisis has happened? Let's think about how that changes the politics and power, and whether that will actually advance the kind of work we want to do, or the voices of the kind of people we want to work with. So it's thinking on your feet all the time. The incentives within donors are not really conducive to thinking and working uh, politically. The good news is that in all these agencies, there are niches, if you like, there are spaces where some experimentation is ongoing, where some research is being done, where um, uh, practitioners uh, get the time to study more carefully the context in which uh, uh, development practitioners uh, operate. Uh, so certainly there is a community of practice that uh, is, is gradually growing.